in the threaded fasteners that is the mechanical fasteners that we are using to join the two components here we introduce to the types of bolt screw the machine screw the bolt material and the strength of the bolt then we already covered the thread designation and the stress area in addition to this here we'll cover the clamping load and tightening of the bolted joint and if the external force is applied to the bolted joint what type of stresses are developed that we are interested so fastener is any device which is used to connect two or more component for example in this case we have two member member one and member two and we have made the hole the bolt is passed the hexagonal part is called as head and this one is called as nut so when the bolt is inserted into the two mating part then the other side we have to introduce the nut and we can form the joint here by tightening the nut from the end opposite to the head of the bolt so there are numbers of the fasteners are available the most common are the threaded fastener referred to as names among them are bolt screws nuts studs and the set screw there is a hardly a difference between the bolt and the screw in fact here if we are using the assembly having the bolt and nut then it will be called as bolt and only the screws are used that is nut is removed and only the we have head and the threaded portion then it will be called as screw as shown in this assembly we have two mating part one and two and in the two mating part we have make the hole no tapping is done is a simple hole is made between the two mating parts so these holes may have the burrs or the sharp edges after the drilling this could bite into the fillet and increase the stress concentration and therefore we have to use the washer to avoid the stress concentration so sometimes the washer is used under the bolt and that will avoid the stress concentration and then the bolt is inserted and other side is get tightened with the help of nut the basic purpose of the bolt is to clamp two or more parts together the clamping load stretches or elongate the bolt and the load is obtained by twisting the nut until the bolt has elongated almost to the elastic limit normally while tightening you have to hold the bolt stationary and twist the nut in this way the bolt shank that is this one is called as the bolt shank will not feel the threaded friction torque so that is the technique used while tightening you have to hold the bolt and you have to tighten the nut so this figure represents the hexagonal bolt we have two parts of it one is unthreaded portion and one is threaded part length of the unthreaded portion will be equal to ld and the length of threaded portion will be equal to lt this total length here is equal to l plus ld so depending upon the nominal diameter d the length of the threaded portion will change so we can have the length of the threaded portion lt i will give some idea about the length of threaded portion that will be equal to 2 times of the nominal diameter plus 16 if we have total length is less than equal to 125 once we know the total length l and the threaded length lt then you can calculate here the length of unthreaded part in between 125 to 200 the length of the threaded portion is taken as 2 times of nominal diameter plus 12 and for length greater than 200 in that case the length of the threaded portion is taken as 2 times of diameter plus 15 so these are standardized relations is used to find out the length of the threaded part and the unthreaded part if we know the total length of the bolt almost similar to the bolt we have a screw here the difference between the screw and bolt is that in the case of bolt the both the members has a simple hole whereas in the case of a screw if we are having a two members to be fastened in that case the two member has a hole but the hole has a thread so threaded hole in mating members since we have a threaded hole in the mating members this serve the purpose of a nut and therefore the nut is not used in the case of screw so screw is a threaded fastener designed to be inserted through a hole in one member to be joined and into a threaded hole in the mating member 
only the hole is made in the member and the meeting member has made the threads by tapping and therefore it will serve as a nut and we have the fastening arrangement in the case of a screw. So technically there is a very small difference between the bolt and the screw. Bolt is the arrangement having the bolt and the nut. We can classify further the threaded fastener as this one is called as shank and the threaded portion. Either we have the fasteners with a tapered shank that is a self threading screw which is normally used in the case of wood screw, sheet metal screw, concrete screw and one is having the uniform that is a non tapered shank which one is be classified as a hexagonal cap screw, machine screw, hexagonal bolt. Even we have total length is a threaded portion then it is called as stud, eye bolts. All these category come in the case of threaded fasteners. So these are the examples where you find the tapered shank. These are very commonly used in the case of the wood screw and the sheet metal screw. In machine design, the most fasteners are made from the steel because of its high strength and the high stiffness and good ductility and the good measurability and the formability. Normally the three types of strength ratings are frequently available. That is the tensile strength, yield strength plus the proof strength. Proof strength is similar to the elastic limit and is defined at the stress at which the bolt or the screw would undergo a permanent deformation that is normally between 0.9 to 0.95 times of yield strength. Even the aluminum is also used for its corrosion resistance in the case of lightweight and the fair strength level. It has a good thermal and the electrical conductivity. Likewise we have brass, copper, bronze, nickel and its alloy, stainless steel, plastic screws and the bolts are used. In the fastener, one of the important arrangement used is the washer. The washers are basically used to provide consistent bearing surface for the bolt head and the nut. It also protects the bolt head fillet from the whole edge conditions and sometimes the lock bolt head or nut to prevent the loosening. So number of washers we have shown here. The very basic one is a flat washer, then we have a lock washer. The third arrangement is a star internal washer and the star external washer. This figure represent here the helical spring type of lock washer. So this is the two ends are slightly overlap each other because of this type of action it can provide the more friction. So basically it provide the better mechanism to prevent it from loosening. Whereas the star internal washers and the star external washers are normally used when we want shake proof joints. So this type of washer has a certain type of T either internal or either external. So these teeth will bite into the member and provide the same capacity mobility to prevent from loosening. So because of a biting here the stress concentration exists between the members. One more time we will define here the nominal diameter equal to DO or is the major diameter, the core diameter, the pitch diameter or the mean diameter. For this one we will consider here a threaded fastener. So this portion here is called as head and if no thread is made then that portion is called as shank. And if we measure the diameter of a shank it will be called as the major diameter and it is represented by D0. In the second figure we have shown the unthreaded portion and the threaded portion. Here the nominal diameter is same as equal to D0 and if we see this diameter which one is from root to root then this diameter corresponds to the core diameter or the internal diameter or the root diameter. It is represented by DI or is represented by DC. So this one is representing the root or internal or the core diameter and diameter corresponding to this dotted line is called as the mean diameter or is called as pitch diameter. Either we can represent it by dm or you can represent it by dp. And the value of the mean diameter we can calculate from the inner diameter and the outer diameter is given as do plus di and whole thing is divided by 2. The total length of a fastener is called as the bolt length 
and is represented by L. The portion on which there is no thread is called as unthreaded portion and that length is represented by LD. L, D here basically stands for the nominal diameter that is equal to D0. So D0 and D they are one and same therefore the suffix D is given which indicate that we have a diameter is same as equal to DO that is a nominal diameter. And the threaded length is represented by uppercase T. So there is a difference here. I am using here uppercase for the threaded length and unthreaded length is equal to LT. Already we have discussed here the connection between the threaded length and the unthreaded length. This time if the D represents here the nominal diameter that is the value of D0, L represents the total length. Then the total length is given as the length of unthreaded portion plus threaded portion. The threaded length is given as 2 times of the nominal diameter plus 16 if length is less than equal to 125. If the length is between 125 to 200 then you have to take the threaded length equal to 2 times of nominal diameter plus 12. And if length exceeds than 200 the length of the threaded portion will be equal to 2 times of D plus 15. There exists a relation between the total length and the threaded length. All these dimensions are in mm. The area of the unthreaded portion is represented by AD that is called as the major diameter area of the fastener is simply given as pi by 4 multiplied by the major diameter square. And in the case of the threaded portion we have to define the AT that is called as the tensile stress area. This value of tensile stress area you have to collect from the table. Or you can calculate this value as pi by 4 into the core diameter plus we have mean diameter divided by 2 and we have to further make a square of this. That is we have pi by 4 and by 4 is pi by 16. We have DC is same as the inner diameter plus we have mean diameter is same as equal to pitch diameter square. So we will find this formula to calculate the tensile stress area AT and AT is called as the major diameter area of the fastener. The bolted joint can be fail in tension or can fail in shear or can fail in bending. Consider here we have two member and the hole is made through this hole the bolt is passed on the other end nut is tightened because of tightening here the force is developed that force will be same as equal to F. So we will develop here the tension. So the bolt here will be in tension and the length of this member will going to decrease. The given joint is called as tension joint if the axis of the bolt and the axis of the force are parallel to each other. So in a tension joint here the bolts need to serve as a clamp. When the bolt and the nut are tightened it produces a tensile pre-stress which equals the compressive stress induced in the joint. The bolt will be under tension whereas the member will be in compression. As you turn here the nut, the length will going to decrease. Therefore the bolt is in tension and the member length will going to decrease and therefore they will come in compression. So in a tension joint the bolt need to serve as a clamp and when the bolt and the nut are tightened it produces a tensile pre-stress which equals the compressive stress introduced in the joint. The joint's longevity and the behavior will depend upon the tightness of the clamp bolt and how long they can maintain the preload. Since here failure is by tension we have to take the force F is equal to we are using here one bolt and this cross section will fail which is circular cross section is perpendicular to the force F that will be our area AT that is a tensile area it is given as pi by 16 DC plus DM whole square multiplied by sigma that is a normal stress. This value of normal stress is taken as the proof stress. And if the forces on the member A and B are applied perpendicular to the axis, in that case the force F will act rightward and the lower member force will act leftward. So this area will be get sheared off. 
this area will be same as again the tensile area. So, shear stress will develop here and the value of the shear stress will be same as equal to the force upon the tensile area 80. This value you have to collect always from table. Or you can calculate this value as pi by 16 multiplied by the inner diameter di plus v of p diameter dp whole square. It can also fail by bending joints. As shown in the figure, we have a bending of the bolt will takes place. So whenever we have a bending will takes place, the joint will fail by means of both shear as well as tension. So you have to consider here the failure is due to both that is the tension as well as shear. Tension will be developed due to the bending stress and one shear stress is produced. Consider here a pressure vessel. So this one is representing the flange of a pressure vessel. And here we have a gasket. To make this joint we are using here bolt and the nut arrangement. To make this joint here initially the nut is snugly fitted and the joint is made. And when the pressure vessel is subjected to pressure then the external force is developed on the top cover. So the fasteners will not allow here the gasket to move from the cylinder. That is also called as the tension joint. So as the pressure will increase it becomes disjointed and the bolt will not allow that. In fact here we are basically interested here about the, the preload that is the nut is initially tightened here snugly that is called as preload and what will be the load once it is externally pressurized, then extra load will develop that is called as external load. Then what will be the load shared by the bolt and what is the load shared by the member that we are interested. So how much load is shared by the member and how much load is shared by the bolt that we are interested. That concept can be explained with the help of the stiffness of the bolt and the stiffness of the gasket. That is the objective of studying the fastener if we are restricted to ensure a safe joint, particularly in the case of pressure vessels.